going on people? It's Tim Sheafear and your boy Ted Carr. Ted Carr. You might be watching this on his channel. If you are, check out my channel. We'll link it below The Vegan Prince. If you're watching it on my channel, The Vegan Prince, check out The Fruitarian, Ted Carr. Um, this, this video is basically, I've been on The Fruitarian Diet for two weeks now. Somewhat new to it. I've had experiences in the past. Ted's been on The Fruitarian Diet for seven years, right? As if you're watching this channel, you know that. Um, and we're just gonna have a little back and forth conversation. Yeah, dude. It's gonna be great. This is this is a video I've been wanting to make for a while now with Tim. Um, as Tim was saying, I've been on this diet for you know, over seven years now, and Tim's just getting into it now. Yeah. But he's been consciously aware that there's like a better way of eating out there for some time now. Yeah. Um, so what made you want to do it now? If you knew fruitarian was good like a few months ago, why didn't you do it then? Yeah. Timing is everything, you know. And I, you have to act on motivation when it comes to you. I went to Woodstock Fruit Festival and met you uh, several years ago um, and I felt great then and since then I've been on a journey of uh, getting back to fitness, getting back to health. Veganism certainly helped, was, was a beginning step on that journey but, and then I remember feeling really good at the fruit festivals. Then, then I've been on a journey of discovering other sort of supplementations and other methods of healing, uh, training with Wim Hof, mm -hmm. things like that. And, and none of it gave me quite the resolve I wanted. And I wanted to keep eating the food I was eating and then and, and then add these few little trinkets into my life and think that everything would be fine and that I'd feel the youthfulness of when I was a teenager again. And I knew I could feel it and I know I can feel it. And I was, I was asking hmm. and asking. And the answers I had before when I was more open, the answers are always simple truths. And the, the, it seems obvious once again to me, <laughs> once I've rediscovered what's been on fruit for two weeks, that's, that's the number one factor is your diet is what's holding us back from feeling as good as we could possibly feel. Yeah, and it's like it's it's like you're saying how like you're eating like this whatever the standard vegan diet or mm. this consciously healthy vegan diet, yeah. and then you're adding in these trinkets, thinking that makes a difference. What you add to it, but really what you're what you're finding here mm. is you're eating way less, yeah. and you're feeling your best. Yeah. You know, it's, like, it's like what you take out, it's more important what you're not eating than what you're actually eating. Yeah. And then when you get to a point where you don't have that much to your diet, it's very simple, just some watermelons, papayas, yeah. some bananas I've been seeing you eating. Yeah. Then you add on those little trinkets, yeah. then you fucking feel that, man. Then you know what they're doing to you. Yeah, it's literally my, my diet since I've been here has been, so it's two weeks now. The first week I had the odd avocado in the evening. I've not had avocado in about four days now. Um, no fats, no nuts or anything at all. And yeah. I literally would have like one and a half watermelons a day, a couple of papayas. I've not even had, like, bananas have been the thickest food I've been yeah. eating, to be honest. And that, today's the first time I've had them in a few days. Um, I'm also doing a, herbing, a herbal cleanse as well, so I'm taking some herbs with it, which is just a concoction of different roots and dandelion leaves and things like that. In, so in liquid form? Liquid tincture and uh, capsule form, but super, super natural, yeah. natural herbs. Um, but the, the fruit diet is the, it's the simplest cleanse. I was watching a lot of Dr. Robert Morse, and I was really inspired. I was flying out to L.A. Uh, for a veg fest there. And I thought, why not extend the trip, come out to Hilo? I, kn I know I wanted to try the raw food stuff again. Um, and then just being here, talking to Ted, we've also got another guy in the house, Joe, who, one of the biggest questions in my head about fruitarian diet is the teeth issue. And yeah. eating it, I don't feel, I've felt my teeth feel a lot worse, like getting home from a, a restaurant than, than any, after any meal of fruitarian. And the guy that's living with us is actually a dentist and he's yeah. 20, 20 months fruitarian. Great teeth, so... Never had a cavity in his life, man. And he just happens to be in the same building as the biggest question that a lot of people have yeah. in, my, in my mind. But And then I've been watching those. The biggest tips for people that want to... The first two weeks is probably the hardest, is, is to set yourself... I made it easy for myself, brought myself to Hawaii. Get yourself in an environment where you can, if you have that option. If you don't have that option, you got to straight willpower it. Make no choices for yourself. Set up the environment around just you. create but, that inner environment of inspiration. Yeah, you got to do that. And, and what read the books. Watch. I was watching Michael Arnstein because I want to be... Uh, I'm a mountain runner by heart and that's what I, I want to do and I know this diet is going to fuel it and watching other people that have, have achieved success doing a similar thing and watching how vibrant this guy is when, when he's on that lifestyle. You yeah. recommended some books to me to read. I've started reading Ann Osborne's. Yeah, Ann Osborne's Path to Paradise, The Live Food Factor. Mm -hmm. Those are two like the most inspirational books I've ever read when it came to raw food. Man. Yeah, that, that's a really key thing is to read books, the 80-10-10 diet, yeah. to keep you inspired, watch the YouTube videos, find the channels. Um, like Ted's, and that that will just keep you motivated. W one of the amazing things I've found is I don't need to drink as much water. Oh, dude. I really I never feel thirsty. Like I'm no. just I'm just super hydrated. The food's yeah. so easy to, eat, to digest, um, and I've just it's just efficient energy for less cost. And um, 
I'm excited once my cleanse is done to start training again on this lifestyle and uh, and go forward. It's, it's there's not many people out here doing it, man. You've been right. <laughs> no, there's so few people doing it, and that and so it can, it can be hard to find some support. But when you do find that one person or those few people online, man, mm. soak up their content, send them messages, yeah. come out and hang out with them. You know, meet up with them. There's people fly over to Kilo just to hang out for a few weeks. Yeah. Joe flew from Australia for four days just to hang out with a fraternian, dude. Yeah, yeah. He's heading back in a couple of days. And we've got Thailand's got plenty of uh, easy access to do yeah. that. Um, my Thailand, yeah. yeah, I mean, even Doug Graham and Osborne lived in England for a bit, so I'm going to go back to England. I'm going to be at the UK Fruit Festival with, with Ted. Yeah, yeah, later yeah. This if you guys want to come to the UK Fruit Festival, check the links in the description. You'll get some information there. Yeah, we'll both be at that. Um, but I, I'm excited to go forward with this. Now I know it's the key. I know I'm going to have some struggles ahead. The biggest battles I had was at Ellen Fisher's house the other day. They made fresh lasagna, cooking it in the oven. And smelling that food, my stomach starts to react like it's creating enzymes ready for I don't know what's going on or it's parasites telling me you normally give me that food, give me some more of that. I don't, I, I don't know what's going on, but a reaction in my body that I wasn't in control of. Now, I know that's not that's not because it's healthy for me. That, that's, right. that's an addiction within me. I, I think a lot of us, I, not everyone has a, has a cooked food addiction, but for me, I know I have an issue with cooked food because I'm willing to, to face it and address it. And I'm willing to, I, I look at the evidence and that is a factor in making me less healthy. So I, mm. if I can choose not to do it, why not choose not to do it? Other than addiction or, or simplicity or stress another factor was removing stress to be out here is a lot less stressful i'm able to make those more conscious better choices and, and that's made my life easier um in, into entering this lifestyle again uh, going forward you got any tips to yeah well maintaining it yeah j yeah so the tip well the tip for maintaining raw mm. to maintain raw you need to you need to first accept where you're at right now Except where you're at physically, like location-wise, except where you're at internally, like with your uh, relationship with cooked food. Like, do you have an, an addictive relationship with cooked food? Do you have an abusive relationship with cooked food? Identify what sort of relationship you have with it and accept that, come to grips with that, and then do something about that. So personally, I admitted I had a cooked food addiction. I did something about it. I sought out help. I asked people online, what do I do, what do I do, what do I do? And I just realized that focusing on the fruit will take care of like 90% of the addiction. Having patience, sure, but focusing on the fruit, Wherever you put your attention, that's where energy is going to go. So energy flows where your attention goes. Put your focus on the fruit, and uh, you're going to have more of that in your life. But uh, one of the things I wanted to mention with you is we were, we were talking earlier about how you cut this watermelon in half. Tim had like, one of the best watermelons ever right in front of him, just half of it. And he's just sitting there staring at it, you know? And he's like, mm, I'm going to enjoy this. But he wasn't like not he, he was in control he could decide to eat the watermelon when he wanted to the watermelon wasn't controlling him saying yeah. like tim eat me now now if that was he like the choice fries and a, a burger right no I, choice I, I, no I, the fries would be going in before i sat down and yes like, dude and it's like being conscious there's there's a, there's a fine line between the purity of like eating for pleasure and eating because you it's, it's our nature and i notice it very finely with cooked food and you notice it with children if you offer them sweets or you offer them fruit. When a child's eating fruit, they are like angelic. And when a child's eating sweets or they want their chicken nuggets, yes. they can be a problem ravenous. if you don't give it to them. They're ravenous yeah. and it's a glut. And we're, we're, that's instilled in us. So I've got, we've got a lot, well, I've got a lot of years of undoing in that. And I think it's, it's a tough issue to be aware of because I, you don't want to be pointing fingers when there's a lot of issues in the world to say cook food is, one of, is the biggest issue in the world. But it, it's the most it's, widespread. It's the most widespread and it's the most, hardest for people to address because a lot of other issues just getting onto veganism is like if you can do veganism amazing that's yeah that's it that's that's, that's so good for the world and then when yes. you want to do it for yourself yes you vegan get, for the animals return for your health yeah, yeah. It, it it seems simple like that and when you experience it it makes it makes a lot of sense the first few days i think fruit throughout the day is easy is the evenings i always want something cooked or i'm used to a meal so making a big salad and using avocado in that is just, is just the key it's as simple oh, as that yeah. and you can use it up uh, lemon dressing or apple cider vinegar or some, something like avoid the oils no oil no salt and no sugar is 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 a big one but it's simple avocado is the solution really like dude for real there, like, there are health i think i think a couple of reasons people don't want to eat this diet one of the big reasons is they don't think that they're going to feel full on it they mm. just won't feel satisfied they won't feel satiated mm. but i've never ever given someone a salad and then have them eat it and say oh i still want more food afterwards like after they eat one of these salads that I make, they're full, man. They're so full. Yeah. Um, and if you want a whole bunch of recipes, there's a link in the description for my recipe ebook there. But um, oh, it's all about just making enough food of high quality food and eating ripe fruit. If you eat unripe banana, how many unripe bananas can you eat? Yeah. Half one, of one, one and a half, one yeah, pops. Yeah. You can eat one unripe banana and then you're like, next, what else can I go for? Yeah. But if you're eating ripe bananas, you can have like 
you know, six to 12 in one meal and they digest so easily and taste so good. Yeah. And then that's gonna fill you up. But also, when you're coming from a cooked food background, this is something I talk about on my channel quite a bit. Tim, you may be experiencing this now. When you're coming from cooked food background, your stomach only needs to grow to about this big to fit in all the cooked food calories. When you eat raw food, your stomach has to grow to like this big to fit in all the raw food calories because it's so much higher in water content. So just like a ballerina has to spend months stretching to, to, to get that range of motion, your stomach needs to stretch too to accommodate the, the size to fit in all the raw food calories. Yeah. So give yourself time, give yourself uh, a few months in order to grow your stomach out. And so you're going to bed like Buddha and you wake up like Gandhi. Wake up flat stomach. Every time, you're going yeah. to bed with the big stomach. So it can take a while to be able to uh, fit in, physically fit in all the raw food yeah. calories that you need to in order to feel full. Yeah. I should talk about how I've, I've felt because there was some fatigue days, but overall I feel my body is on a, a massive thank you. Like it really, it feel, I feel like I've shedded a skin, like a weight, a thick layer around my joints and things like that is, is, is lightening off and it's continuing to go. This is two weeks in, I really turned the corner like just yesterday, the day before, of just feeling like vibrancy and excitement for my experiences to come, rediscovering this lifestyle and it's, it's, it's a hectic, it's a hectic road, man, and we need more pioneers. The vegan community is, a, it's gone a bit wayward, and it's caught up in gossip and drama, and it's, it's lost, you know, since certain members went from raw food to cooked food, and then, and that that was fine. Raw, raw till four is a, a good movement to begin, yeah. but we need to rem, we need to remain sight of constant progress on self because we're too busy trying to correct others in the vegan community. We're too busy trying to correct people that aren't in the vegan community that we're yeah, not looking dude. at ourselves and how we can progress. For What's real. the last lifestyle change you made since going vegan? What's the last diet change? And That's it, man. People get on vegan, they start coasting. They, they get on raw vegan, they start yeah, coasting. Vegan is just, the, 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 veganism is like the yellow belt. It's like the, the start chapter, you know? It's not, it's nowhere yet. It's, it's, um, it's, it's everywhere for the planet. So we're not, I'm not putting it down, sure. but, but I know that for your own health, the discovery, it's simplicity. The earth made it the way we want it. And I'm, you know, I'm speaking as a guy that's been on and off it, but I know from, from being Tessie and Ted, Michael Arnstein, um, and Osborne, and Osborne, they're like reading that book is, is super inspiring. What a woman, some of the things she's done. Yeah, um, man. And it, it, it's, yeah, the logic's there. Do the research, you'll see that the, the logic's there. And the, the experience is something that you can't give anyone. Like, and going through the struggle, you, you can't see the sunshine on the other side, but now I'm starting to feel it and see it, and I'm like, man, it makes sense again. <laughs> it makes sense again. It's simple, it's clear, um, and I'm excited for the future. Yeah, and I just want to leave you guys on one little note here, like a little bit of practical advice. I, I personally would not have made it these eight years if I had not been completely inspired to the max in order to do this. Tim wouldn't have started if he wasn't inspired to the max Absolutely. to start either. Yeah. So how do you get inspired? You've got to consume extremely inspirational content or hang around people who are doing what you want to do. Hang around inspirational people. And you do that at the exclusion of hanging around uh, dead weights. You, do, you consume inspirational content at the exclusion of consuming negative content. Like, I only watch raw fooders on YouTube. I don't watch people eating cooked food. Because if I watch people eating cooked food, I'm focusing on that, I'm gonna want some cooked food too. So I focus on people eating fruit. My Instagram, I'm scrolling through Instagram, it's all fruit, fruit, fruit. My Tumblr is all fruit, fruit, fruit. Yeah. Everything I consume online is fruit focused. And that's how I've been able to succeed over all these years. I focus on the fruit. You create that it's world around world, man. you, man. Yeah, that's beautiful. And this tonight, what are we going to? Raw food potluck, dude. Raw food potluck, and I couldn't be more excited. <laughs> yeah, dude, it's gonna be amazing. We'll vlog it for you, probably. Yeah, check man. Check it on Tim's channel. Check it on my channel. And that, that excitement is a pure inspiration. It's a pure excitement. It's right. not like a, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be gluttonous and greedy tonight. It's not yeah. like cheat day. Cheat. This is the opposite of cheat day. This is like, this is the exciting day because it's a potluck and people are bringing raw mm. food. But I have, food. there's no guilt involved with it. It's because it's, it's, it's not pure. It's pure. It's pure. And, and you have to be so sensitive. And this is for those of you that are there, that are ready, that are in tune to what's it, man. And sensitive to the, the fine differences of the human reaction and our, our nature and what's what we're truly, what truly is in our nature and what's just a desire, a gluttonous desire that's programmed into us because we've grown up in this society that is so far from our ancestry. And, and so far from where we where we could be, we as I say, we are uh, eagles raised by chickens, and we have to we yeah, have to re discover again what what's our true nature. And this is, and and I think realigning yourself with fruit is a huge step on that. On it's that a ladder. step. It's a yeah, step. It's it a really step. is a step. Vegetarianism isn't the cure all. 
veganism is the cure all. You still gotta get early nights. You still gotta move your body. You still gotta have some physical touch with other human beings. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta have community. Yeah. You've gotta uh, experience growth with your, with your goals and with your spiritual uh, relationship with the universe or God or whoever, or whatever. It's a lot of work, um, but the fruitarian is one pillar. It's one spoke of the wheel, but uh, it's one that tastes effing delicious. It's ones that can make you feel good immediately. It's huge. And, uh, you're, you're, you have to be the customs to your orifices, to your holes, the, the, the things in your body, what you put in your ears, mm -hmm. what you put in your mouth, what you, what you put in your nose, your what you eyes, put in your eyes. You've got to sure be the customs, is. you've got to be on top of that, be yeah. the passport checker, be That's like, right, uh-uh, you ain't coming into my country. That's you right, into, bro. Don't mean. That's you, right. I, this is, I know I know what you did to me last time. You're not coming in again. Yes, dude. You know, I, Diligence. Oh, you, you, some false promises because you smell good or you got fancy wrappers. Yeah. Yeah, you got, it's, you got to be on it. Be in charge I of that. I love that, dude. Yeah. Be, yeah, be on guard what comes in. And uh, just, it's, it's all about self-love, you know. If it makes you feel good and you can sustain it, then uh, stick to it. But yeah. if it uh, makes you feel like crap later and you're aware of that, then avoid it. But last question for you, Tim. Yeah. How do people know when they're ready to make the, to make the move to fruitarianism? When you're when you've tried everything or you've tried a lot of things and you're still questioning, you've got the inner belief that I'm doing all this stuff, I've got all this knowledge, and yet I just don't feel right in my body. That's where I was at. I had all this knowledge, all these different trinkets I was trying, but I wasn't willing to address the biggest thing, and that was the cooked food I was eating on a daily basis. I wanted to eat the cooked food and add different things that would that would that I I wasn't conscious at the time that the cooked food was hindering hindering the way my body was feeling and it's maybe not for everyone some people can eat cooked food and be totally controlled and yeah. be totally lean but for me I was swollen I have uh, I think candida and a few issues inflammation and it was only fueling it even when I was eating clean vegan it was still fueling it and and the fruitarian it's just you're not fighting yourself because it's hydration on top of uh, nutrients in, in efficient form so yeah that's amen too I mean the same reason I came to fruitarianism was the same reason dude um, I was just desperate. I tried everything to get rid of my acne. My face was covered in acne. My back was covered in acne. My chest was covered in acne. I tried everything. I was like, screw it, I'm going to go raw. Went raw, and uh, within just a couple of weeks of eating just fruit, acne went away. And then ac once the acne went away, I'm like, hey, well, why am I still eating this way? And it was just sheer inspiration. I'm like, what else can I achieve? How else good can I feel? How lean can I get? How pure can I feel? Mm -hmm. And uh, now I'm here, and uh, I have no expectations of going back. So. Exciting, man. That's it, man. It's a beautiful world. We need more fruitarians on the planet, like Ted, like Tim, man. Just newcomers. We need newcomers, yeah, man. Yeah, we need we need a we need a union now. We need the vegans that are ready, that are that aren't on, on, uh, distracted by the gossip and the drama. That are like, hang on, there's there is a serious movement still going on, and it's underground right now. The the raw movement was bigger a few years ago, yeah. and I feel like it's gone underground again. Maybe that's because I've not no, been no, fixed. Could, it, could you know, do, could, no, definitely. You know, you know, um, but it could do with a rise again, so I want to just give a shout out to Michael Onstein because he is certainly a pioneer and a way here in that. Doug Graham, you've got people like Grant Campbell as well, and yeah. uh, Ronnie, Fruity Ronster in England, and, and Osborne. So thank you for all your work. Thank you, Ted. Seven years, man. And you're, what? how old are you now? 26. 26, man. I'm 29, under 30s. Um, sub 30, we, need, man. we need more of you sub 30s or around that age joining this lifestyle. And I'm not trying to speak as someone who's who's on it or claiming to be fruitarian, but I get it. I really and, I, and I'm uh, I'm excited to be back. Cool, man. This is sick. More videos from Tim soon. More videos from myself soon. Catch you guys later. Peace. If you're not subscribed to Tim or myself yet, links in the description. You know, Hit the red you know. subscribe button. You know what to do. If you liked Adios. it, like it. Hit us up with a comment.